describes the projects that you have to build in your first Greenfoot lab, which we've named the Wombat Lab. You'll see why. So I've got Greenfoot open here, and the first thing I'm going to do is load the Wombat scenario. So I'm going to go over to where it says Scenarios Open, and I'm going to navigate my way over to the desktop and find the folder called Greenfoot Stuff. Go to the book scenarios. In Chapter 1, there's a scenario called Leaves and Wombats. So I'm opening that here. Now, in my folder, you can see that there's a large number of wombats that are already here. You're only going to have one wombat initially there. That's the basic wombat. These are the ones that you need to create in your project. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over each of these now. Uh, the first wombat you need to create is a version of a wombat called a dead wombat. So let's look at that one. That is a dead wombat. You can see that if I cause it to act or if I turn on the run command, uh, it doesn't do anything. Likewise, if I come over here and I ask it to turn, let's say I ask it to turn 90 degrees, once again you see that it does not turn. The reason it doesn't move or run is obviously because it's a dead wombat. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do. If you're wondering how to do that, let me give you a little hint. The wombat has certain methods turned off in the same way that uh, in class when I turned off the speak method for the Basenji class on dog, use the same tactics here to turn off the move and the turn commands for the wombat. Okay, so that's your first. Okay, the next one you need to do is called turning wombat. So let me create one of those. And then when I run this, you see that it just sits there in the same square and just turns when it's its turn to move. Okay. And the next one we're going to do is called Right Turning Wombat. And let's have a look at that one. Now, a regular wombat, let me create a regular wombat first. Just observe what happens when it gets to the edge of the world. You can see that it turns to the left. But what we want to do is we want to create a wombat that when it gets to the edge of the world, you see that it turns to the right. Okay, so we have to figure out how to do that. Now let's look at that one for a second. I'm going to put that one on the screen and you can see that this wombat has its own uh, image installed and we're going to go through the process of showing you how to do that. So to do that we're going to uh, first create a wombat class and then when we come down here and it says set image, if we go over there what we want to do is we want to create this wombat image right here. So to do that uh, I'm going to go over here and say import from file you can see that the Wombat picture is already loaded on my PC and uh, I simply need to upload that. Now where are you going to get this picture from? Let's talk about that for a second. So if I come over here to Google and uh, I search for Wombats and I go to the pictures for the Wombats. Now you do not have uh, the rights to take uh, any of these that you want. So what we want to do is we want to click on search tools and we want to go to usage rights and say labeled for reuse. And now these are the wombat pictures that you have access to. It's not quite every single wombat picture out there, but you can see that there are plenty to pick from. And you just pick one of these and download it onto your PC. Uh, our work is not done there, though. Let's just do this, uh, save this image. I'll call this uh, wombat2. And uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to edit that image. So let's go over to the downloads, and here's the Wombat 2. I'm going to edit that using uh, some editor. I'll just use Paint because it's uh, convenient. And what you want to do is you want to reduce the size of this to be about uh, 60 by 60. So we're going to say Resize, Pixels, and then I'm going to just change this to be about 60 by 60. And I'll make it much smaller. It might squish a little bit. That's okay. We're going to save it. And now when I come back to my green foot, I can uh, upload that from the PC, import from file, and, and I can just select that. And you can see it's right here. And then I can just install that on my uh, on my uh, object that I've created here, say set image and set it to Wombat 2. Okay, and then it'll set it like that. Okay, so that's what you have to do. And otherwise, you can see this thing works just like a regular Wombat. Okay, the next one is going to be the Bipolar Wombat. 
And what this one does is it changes its picture each time it goes. So you see that it's facing to the right. If I just hit the act button, you can see that now it faces to the left. And the next one faces to the right, faces to the left, faces to the right, faces to the left. And you can see that it keeps changing, uh, going in uh, uh, different directions. D the picture basically swaps every time it moves. Okay, so that's Bipolar Wombat. Dizzy Wombat is the next one. And this one sort of moves haphazardly. I'm going to, and uh, the trick here is to use uh, the random number generator to uh, make it turn in some random direction before it moves. The next one we're going to have is called the Trapped Wombat. So let's look at that wombat. As it is, it runs like a regular wombat, but if I put some uh, net objects onto the screen here, put another net over there. And now if I run this wombat, you see when it gets to the net, it's trapped, and now it doesn't come out anymore. And this particular net, by the way, can also uh, capture more than one wombat. So you can see that uh, it can capture as many wombats that will wander into the net. So that will be the trapped wombat. The last two wombats you have to build are square wombat and much more difficult is rectangle wombat. Square wombat, I'm going to go over with you. Let's look at that one. Let me reset this board. And here is a square wombat and it wants to know how big a square to build. So I'll make this one go three by three. So I'll put a three in there. And now you see when I run it, you see it runs in a square pattern. Uh, three, it moves three and then it turns, okay? Similar to this, but much more difficult to build is the rectangle wombat. Let me create one of those. And this one needs to know how wide and how far down to go. I'll make it a two five wombat. And let's just run this one. You can see that it moves in a rectangle pattern. Uh, in order to test your rectangle wombat, what you want to do is you want to create more than one. I'll put another one on the screen here and make this one go a little bit smaller. Make this one go maybe two, three. And if I run them here in unison, you can see that they're both working. Uh, you want to use two wombats at least to make sure that uh, they're taking turns moving so they appear to move simultaneously. And uh, the other thing I want to show you here with the rectangle or the square wombat is if they get too close to the edges, uh, they freak out a little bit. But you don't have to worry about that on this particular project. There are ways to deal with the edges of the world in Greenfoot, but since this is your first Greenfoot assignment, uh, it's not worth worrying about. When we get further along uh, in Greenfoot and Java, we'll, we'll learn how to deal with being too close to the edge. But here, you can just assume that when the rectangle wombat is being created, it's going to be far enough towards the center of the screen, and the rectangle will be small enough that it's not going to approach the edge. The rectangle wombat is extremely challenging. So challenging, in fact, that we're going to show you the code that we used for the square wombat to get you started. So let me first put a square wombat on the screen and set it to be 3x3. Three and just remind you of how it goes. So here you can see it's moving. Let's look inside the square wombat for a second and look at the code uh, for square wombat. So here is the square wombat and you can see that I have these two instance variables. One is called a side length and the other is called a current length. And when we first initialize the wombat in the wombat uh, square wombat constructor, uh, this, by the way, should first also have a call to super. Uh, the super call will be put in by the compiler, but it's better to have it in there uh, uh, explicitly. Anyway, uh, so we're going to pass it this S information, which is going to be the side length, and we're going to store that in the permanent side length variable. That's going to tell us how big a square the wombat's going to trace. And the current length is going to be used to figure out how much of this length we've already drawn uh, as we're progressing in our movement. What I've done here is I've overloaded the move uh, command on the regular wombat and the first thing we do is we check to see if the side length is equal to the current length. That means we're done uh, drawing one of the sides and if that's the case we're going to reset the current marker and we're going to turn the wombat. Otherwise you can see that we just move like a regular wombat and we also 
uh, increase our current length to show that we've made progress on drawing the current side. So this is a relatively simple code that's needed for the square wombat. The rectangle wombat code is much more complicated as you've probably figured you're going to need two of these uh, side length uh, variables. One to check the side length, uh, the side by side, and the other one is the up down. And there's some other changes you're going to need to make here as well. Uh, but this should hopefully get you a head start on how to build the rectangle wombat. So that, in a nutshell, are all the wombats that you have to build for this lab.